morning, good morning. afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, really nice meeting you and I thank you so much for having me and I'm very pleased to present today. I think my lecture will be a good continuation of the previous one. So I'm going to talk to you about an example of a program that we developed at our institution in regards to transition of diabetes care from the pediatric to the adult service. I think this topic is very important, not only for pediatric endocrinologists, but also for our colleagues in adult endocrine to see what they are going to get to, because, you know, as we appreciate many cases of all of the cases of pediatric type two diabetes will end up in adults. And we have been also seeing more cases of type two diabetes than any time before. So that's also very important for our adult colleagues. So in pediatrics, we see mostly type one diabetes, but as I mentioned, you know, uh, previously, the rate of type two diabetes has been uh, alarmingly increasing, especially in obese, uh, in states where obesity is really very common, such as uh, Texas. Right now, I would say probably one of uh, every third uh, uh, patient is uh, obese and, probably 90% of these obese kids with diabetes are type 2. We also, we also see rare forms of diabetes, such as maturity onset diabetes of the youth. And, you know, that means for the people who are, for the endocrinologists, whether they are pediatric or adult endocrinologists, that means earlier age of onset, longer duration of the disease, and maybe complications. So, you know, in pediatrics, we always remember that one size doesn't fit all, and it's very important to understand some of the important, uh, fa important factors related to dealing with pediatric diabetes. So starting with uh, the system, you know, once you have, you know, uh, a patient with type one diabetes or type two diabetes in the pediatric field, means that, you know, someone else is taking care of their diabetes, depending on the age of the onset of the disease, it might vary, but in general, in the beginning, there is someone else who is taking care of them. And when you're talking about transition of care, you are talking about, you know, understanding and encouraging self-care and self-management in regard to their diabetes, assuming the care of their diabetes. And for that reason, you know, starting any transition of care program, it doesn't really work unless we have colleagues from the other end, the adult endocrine side, collaborating with us. So we really need to find a destination where we are going to to send these patients to. It's also very important to bridge the gap in the, in, in the health delivery system, in the uh, uh, health insurance, in who is going to pay for the diabetes care when talking about this uh, uh, transition. Uh, we need to understand the differences in learning styles between individuals. So this is really very variable, depends on the maturity of the um, uh, patients, which can be really very variable. I'm sure that, you know, you, our adult colleagues who are attending this conference still see young adults that come with someone else who is helping their uh, diabetes, similar to the other spectrum of age when you have someone who is very old and also needs help. So uh, the aim of transition of care program is to improve and increase access to health care improve the quality of care of the delivery of diabetes and enhance the uh, health of the patients and their diabetes outcome, including something very important, which my colleague talked to you about in the previous lecture, which is the mental health issues. So our uh, program uh, started at the age of 16 and a half. We start talking about transition of care when the patient is 16 and a half. We hope to finalize that transition when the patient is 18. So we'll start talking about this when patient is at 16 and a half, patient who graduated from high school, some people, some kids are very smart and can graduate early, when they're legally independent. We don't see this very often, but it can happen in, 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 in some cases. Or at, when the female patient become pregnant, at any time during the pediatric endocrine diabetes care. Now, as you appreciate, dealing with uh, uh, 
diabetes during pregnancy requires a lot of uh, attention, a lot of care because it influences the uh, pregnancy outcome. And most of the pediatric endocrinologists do not have the experience that our adult colleagues have. So in some cases, for example, we have transferred this case to adult endocrinologists. And after delivery, a patient is still in the diabetes age range. She came back to us and we continued the transition of care program. So these were the criteria to start the transition of care program. And the roadmap is basically dealing with the uh, patient and his or her family versus the system. So first of all, we need to understand and maximize the skills related to the successful self-management of diabetes. Then we need coordination of transition of care. We really need to identify people, you know, system at the other end of the spectrum in adult care to be able to connect to understand the barriers. And I, you know, this is the barrier in, in both in the, uh, uh, from the patients and, and also from the system end. Also need to, end, to create a plan of intervention to help encourage this young adult to uh, start the transition of care uh, product. We collaborated with adolescent care, especially in regard to, to, to mental health, in regards to continuing the care between the uh, clinic visits. So when it, it was about to do the transition, actually, we uh, prepared a discharge summary. We made sure that patients have had enough uh, diabetes medication and supplies. We provided them with instruction packet about what to do, how it's going to happen, when to call and what to call. And then we followed up with phone calls to make sure that number one, the transition of care has happened. And number two, there is at least one uh, visit documented with our adult colleagues. The challenges that we faced were related to three aspects, were psychological factor, then factors affecting access to healthcare and communication factor. Psychological factors are very important. And actually, you know, as an echo to the previous lecture, the psychological factors start with, it starts in the pediatric field. Even when the kid is first diagnosed with type one diabetes, it's a big burden, not only for the child, but also for the family. As you know, kids really like to eat candies and hate needles, and you are giving them a condition where they have to monitor their diet and you know, watch what they eat, especially carbohydrates. It can be flexible with the carbohydrate counting and modern in, uh, diabetes management, but there's still some restriction, right? So you are talking about kids who hate needles and you are asking them to test frequently, then we were able to use technology in most of the cases and that would decrease the burden. But then still there is a huge element of burnout. Many of these kids are really tired. We scream for depression, we scream for mental illness. And it's very important to understand this because if you don't, the diabetes care itself is not going to move for, further. We scream for depression, adjustment disorder, anxiety, eating disorder is very common. All of this will affect the outcome to uh, diabetes care. So we really try to do this during the pediatric field. We don't just do this uh, uh, at the transition of care, but we basically review it at the point of transition to see if these kids need any help. So, you know, there were some patients who completely refused this. Like, you know, I'm sure that you guys have this in your, you know, for our adult colleagues, you see this very often, but there are people who are very secretive about their diagnosis. They don't want anyone else in the family to know about it. They don't want anyone in school to, to, to know about it. So there is a maturity level, there is a maturity aspect, you know. Uh, some teenagers were not even ready for independence of diabetes care, even at the age of 18. We, we had some kids, you know, at, even at the age of 18 that their moms was doing everything for them, checking their blood sugar, giving them insulin. And that's going to be a problem when they become independent because they're not gonna have their family member with them all the time. So there are other factors that affect the access to healthcare. So in the United States, the major issue that we face is change of the insurance. Right now, most of the insurance will allow 
their children to stay on their parents' insurance till the age of 21, but some of them don't. So when you, you have to transition of insurance, that might be a problem in getting the same benefits, lack of insurance, lack of financial means, even to pay for the visit, change to a different healthcare system, especially if the child goes out of town, they go to college, they go to different settings. So need to make sure before you move to out, you know, a pl place out of your out of town where all of your diabetes care has been going on for many years. We need to find a place. We need to find a system that you know you are comfortable with and you can deal with, and it will accept you. Transportation problem, you know, lifestyle, college, work, you know, uh, alcohol, sexuality, pregnancy, drinking, all of these issues. We review with these, you know, teenager to make sure what to expect, to educate them about what they need to do to guide them through this uh, uh, transition of care period. So the other uh, uh, factors that we faced were related to communication. Yes, we have done everything. We went through psychological screening. We refilled the prescription. We go, found an adult endocrinologist in the town where they are moving to. So we have done everything possible. Now we need to document that this happened. Some patients did not even return phone calls, right? Some pa patients has dis disconnected phones, right? Some patients did not make the appointment. And to us, it was a challenge just to be able to communicate with the patient to document this transition of care and make sure that it has happened in the way that we wanted to. So why is this important? I think it's very important to monitor the outcome, right? You know, one of the things that we looked at is the level of the hemoglobin A1C at discharge. When we discharge our patient from the pediatric care to the adult, what was the average hemoglobin A1C? Diabetes complication, as you appreciate, since diabetes, type 2 diabetes is happening at long, at earlier age, it means longer duration of having diabetes on board. The youngest kid ever reported with type 2 diabetes was three and a half years old, morbidly obese patient. I actually presented this in the European Association Study of Diabetes in Stockholm in 2015. So this kid means that she's going to deal with diabetes for a very long period of time, and so are many other kids, right? So uh, this is also very important for population health. This is important for medical economics. This is important for cost of care and also important for the reduction of DKA hospitalization. So uh, bottom line in our study, the post hospitalization transition of care so that uh, uh, patients you know, that follow up within one month was 49%. So uh, uh, another study showed that you know patients who had type one diabetes is 25 showed 82 percent attended appointment for at least uh, six months. So in our study, we use the outcome of 7.5. That's somewhere between seven and eight, depending on different age group. And bottom line. Uh, around 65% of our population was compliant, 35% fell in the non-compliance. So what did we learn from this transition of care? We learned that mental health issues are very important. It's very important to address during the pediatric care. It's very important to re-screen at the transition of care. It's very important to alert our adult colleagues about this issue when they do the transition. We also had another program, which was, in my opinion, was very important, which was related to transition of care from the inpatient, from the DKA to the outpatient, because we don't want any patients to fall through the crack and doesn't make any follow-up. There were a few cases, sad cases of, in, in the United States and Canada, where patients actually never, uh, or family decided not to follow up with any doctor decided not to treat with insulin. And two of these cases, you know, of the young patient died and parents went to jail. So we really need to establish a system that once we have a new onset of diabetes or recurrent case of DKA, that there is a documentation of transition of care uh, from the inpatient to outpatient. So we also included this in our program. 
So it's very important to get the patients and their family involved, fix up this, you know, or try to fix social problem, improve this, you know, uh, social network, improve the, you know, encourage these patients to go to diabetes camp, encourage them to participate in social activity related to their diabetes and with their support group. And finally, most important thing is to improve the quality of care in regards to diabetes. So this is where we are right now. I hope that you know you guys have uh, uh, got some benefit from this lecture, and I'm open to any question that you have.